Well, considering I talked about in the last episode how I thought I'll give a 4-2-3-1 a go, and it ended up going in the bin fairly quickly, and we went back to the diamond we'd started the season with, I've had another tactical viddle, and this one seems like it's worked. How you doing everybody and welcome to part 5 of the Aston Villa save here on FM24. I'm Stu, thank you for joining me in today's video where we've got games against Sunderland in the FA Cup and then I'm a little bit torn of what to do with the second episode. We've got a juicy game against Chelsea coming up but we're also in the semi-final of the Carabao Cup. That is a realistic opportunity at Silverware in this save. So I actually might play Bournemouth and Chelsea off camera and come back for the second game against Bournemouth. And we'll see whether we can get a cheeky cup final in this first season of the save. And if you're excited to see whether we can do that, then do not forget to leave a like on the video for me and to subscribe so you don't miss any of the nonsense that comes out of this face right here. Since you were last with us, um, I'll be honest with you, it's been up and down. However, again, as I mentioned, we have gone to a 4-3-3. I'm pretty settled on this now. Unless anything dramatic happens, I'm pretty settled that this is what we're going to be using going forward. Maybe not those exact personnel in those positions, but... I think it probably is what we're going to do. Now, we made the switch after we got bodied by Manchester City. Now, I did have a bit more tactical fiddling. As you can see, it didn't take very long for us to change things around a little bit. I um, mean, that game, we started with the diamond, had a bit of a fiddle. And, well, yeah, it wasn't great, I've got to be honest with you. So, we changed it after that. Beat Brentford 2-0, smashed Luton 6-2, smashed that team 5-0 um, as well. Then smashed West Ham United 4-0. Arsenal, that was a weird one, I've got to be honest with you. Another 4-0 there. Um, Nicola Zaniolo, by the way, pushing the work in as a right winger. Honestly, what a player he's turned out to be for us this season. Um, but then we did have a few shaky results. Liverpool, 2-1. Honestly, we were not in it for, 90, uh, for 45 minutes. And then the second half, we turned back up. Got a late consolation goal, but it really didn't do much for us. We then really struggled against Nottingham Forest, 3-2. That was a bit of a concern. An 89th minute goal. And we thought it really settled things. But then a late penalty really gave us a bit of nerves towards the end. We then got bodied by Manchester United. But again, didn't start off very well. Apologies, had a frog in my throat. Uh, didn't start off very well. Came into it far too late. But by that point, the damage had already been done. And then Brighton. Do you know what? This one, I don't mind because Brighton are a decent side. 3-2, Jacob Ramsey with an 88th minute winner. There were 10 minutes of added time, which really made me nervous, but we got through. And that brings us to today's game. And this is the 11 we're going to be using to hopefully go through to the next round of the FA Cup. Hopefully. It is Martinez and goal. Cash, Conser, Carlos, Digne in defence. Louise McGinn and Ramsey in the middle with Zaniolo, Lamar and Watkins as the front three. Let's get into the game. So, a couple of things we need to talk about. <laughs> Um, we've fallen out with Emmy Martinez. Um, the reason we've fallen out with him is because we gave a bit of a harsh team talk after the... I, I can't remember which one it was. It might have been the Nottingham Forest game. Um, oh, I do this every single time. One moment. You would have thought by now that I would remember to do that before I start recording. But I don't. Of course I don't. Um, I can't remember exactly, but I think yeah, it was the Nottingham Forest game um, because just we didn't play very well. And I had a bit of a go at the defence more than anything. And he is the only player who reacted badly to it. I mean, he conceded two sloppy goals, so no wonder. So we actually left him out of the last game against Brighton. And again, I kind of put that down to the reason why it was a 3-2. I think with Martinez happy, fully fit and fully in form, we probably would have maybe conceded one of those goals, not both of them. But yeah, it's just one of those things. So we're in that kind of weird period now where he's not happy. I'm not happy with him. But his performances this season have been enough for me to try and work out, okay, let's work out a way around this because he is a top quality player. He's been really, really solid for us. I really like him um, in this game. I really like Jacob Ramsey as well because he's gone and scored. I tell you what, he does a great job from that centre mid on attack position. He really does. There's a few games where he's not played well. And realistically, when you look at the games we've not done well in, recently they've been against big teams. I mean, in terms of not winning games, obviously we've struggled against Nottingham Forest, we've struggled against Brighton, but the games we haven't won have been against big teams. I'm quite content with that. There's work to be done on this squad. Even though this squad has got some real quality in it, there is some work to do in it. I mean, our midfield three, two members at midfield three don't normally start. That's the truth. Douglas Louise, John McGinn. I mean, Douglas Louise, you could argue, should start. John McGinn... 
I don't really get on with him in FM. I love him in real life. I don't really get on with him in Football Manager. I think when you consider that, I think, you know, we're doing pretty well so far. I don't, I don't know what my original point was. I actually talked myself around from my original point there completely. Um, but yeah, Emmy Martinez, we've fallen out with him. However, I'm hopeful we can rebuild that relationship. Fingers crossed. I'm just going to have to try and take it easy on him a little bit. That's the main one, if I'm honest. Um, Douglas Luiz forgave us for our harsh team talk. Ironically, we've now fallen out with another player since then. And Esri Concert kind of wants to leave. Um, he's had his head turned by Tottenham. And Tottenham only wanted to loan him in. We were never going to turn around and agree with that. One of the Saudi Arabia clubs actually came in and made an offer as well. But I gave them a really high bar to meet and they didn't meet it. So I turned that down. He hasn't thrown a wobbly about that, which is quite interesting. In terms of player form, our centre-back situation is quite interesting. They're all having ropey games recently, but every now and then they'll have a decent one. Zaniolo has been great up until one or two games recently. Thomas Lamar has been very inconsistent. He's either been really good or really trash. I'm hopeful that he's going to continue to be really good today. Um, and Ollie Watkins. We, I'm trying to think of where we were at with Ollie Watkins in the last video. But he hasn't been playing well. We had a chat with him about it. And we actually did one of the targets that's been introduced this year. And lo and behold, he started playing better. Now, we have had a few offside goals recently, which... Huh, have irked me ever so slightly, but he has been scoring. He did score. I'm pretty sure he scored in the last game. I think he didn't score the game before that. I think he scored against Brighton. I'm pretty sure he scored against Nottingham Forest. I'm pretty sure he scored in one of the games before that. He kind of literally the first game after setting the target, he scored a hat trick, then got injured because football manager is going to football manage. So, yeah, but he has started to improve a little bit. Obviously, he's not scored yet today, but the game is still young. 1 0 against Sunderland at half time. I'll be honest with you. I don't know if I'm happy with that. I'm glad we're in, in the lead, obviously. But I'm not sure if I'm happy with the fact that it's only 1-0. Realistically, we should be battering these boys. Let's go and do that, shall we? I'm going to demand more from them. Let's just see a marked improvement, shall we? I want to see some goals. Because I'm not being funny. We're playing our strongest eleven, more or less. Other than, again, the midfield. Jacob Ramsey's having a whale of a time. Also, did we see Matty Cash taking that throw in? That's not the side Matty Cash plays on. I mean, I don't mind it. It's led to a goal, but I'm not thrilled with my right back being the other side of the pitch. To the point where, for the rest of this match, I'm going to make sure we change it. I don't know if I even can change it. I mean, throw-ins. Can I change who takes it? I don't know if I can change who takes it. I don't even know... How I would do that. So it's Lucas Digne there. Let me go to middle third. And attacking third. Yeah, attacking third, it's Matty Cash. It should not be Matty Cash. I don't like it being taken by Matty Cash. I really don't like it being taken by Matty Cash, but he won't let me change it while we stay on that one. Well, do you know what? We're going to have to keep it. I, I, I'm not going to fiddle with the instructions in the middle of a game too much. We'll keep it as it is at the moment, but I'm not happy with Matty Cash coming over to the left and taking that. I'm really not. I'd much rather be Lucas Digne. I'd very much rather it be. I thought they were going to get that. I thought for some reason I was going to come across goal and the ball was going to end up in the back of the net then. I'm really glad it hasn't right. Zaniolo. Sprinting down, not really down the line. He's going towards the line now. He's kind of holding the ball up. He's giving the ball away. He's been excellent recently. He goes and gives the ball away there. Goodness me. But we've got possession back. Diego Carlos now, who, I'll be fair to him, when he's played on the left side of defence, there's Ollie Watkins. What did I tell you? He's in it. He's back in form. Um, I will be fair to Diego Carlos. When we've played him on the left side of defence, as is his preference, he's been all right. He's been okay. But... When we played him on the right-hand side, he's been trash, if I'm honest. I mean, he's not had the best game today. Conta hasn't had the best game either. However, our attacking line is doing the work. I mean, we've we've grown into the game. We've certainly not come out like, like a house on fire 
banging the goals in. But we have slowly but surely been popping the ball into the back of the net, which has been nice to see. Right. In terms of changes, the team has been really tied up until this period. And we've had a couple of extra days off. So I am going to rest a couple. But it's working out who the best players to rest are. What I am going to do is I'm going to take Diego Carlos. Pop into defensive midfielder because he can play there. And we'll bring Pau Torres on. I'm going to rest Bubakar Kamara because he's one of the tiredest players that we've got. So we are going to rest him. But I'm also going to bring on Leon Bailey, who has not appeared for us all season. All season. But I'm willing to give him an opportunity in this game to prove that he might have a future here. I am still determined we're going to sell him. But I am willing to give him the chance. Up to him whether he takes it. One thing I am going to do, because he is left-footed, I am going to ask him to cut inside. Because he's left-footed, and I feel like that will just make a lot more sense. We'll make that change. Obviously, we've already got the change of Pau Torres coming on. Uh, Diego Carlos is going to protect the back line. I think I'll leave it at that for now. I've got the other changes that I want to make in my head. Um, Andrea Bellotti, by the way, who came in and was like banging goals in for fun to begin with, Gone off a cliff completely. He's really not contributed a lot. Especially since we've gone down to a one-striker system. That is really unfortunate defending. Really unfortunate defending. That's one of those. The second the mistake happens, you know exactly what's coming from it. Oh, I hate those so much. Because you can just telegraph it. The second the error happens... I mean, this is no issue here. But Power Towers just hits it into the head of Patrick Roberts. And you just know it's going to be a goal because the team is scrambling after that because of the error. Disappointing goal to concede. I would have liked to have gotten a clean sheet with Emmy Martin as after our issues. But it's fine. We're enough goals ahead that I'm not overly concerned. But again, I would kind of like a little bit more in terms of goals. Right, Matty Cash is going to come off for La Tomba. Uh, Lucas Digne can come off for Moreno. And for my final trick, I'm not going to take uh, Jacob Ramsey off because he's on two goals. I feel like that would be really cruel. So, I think what I am going to do... Am I? I don't know. I don't know what I am going to do, actually. <laughs> I was talking myself into something then. I don't really know what I was talking myself into. Um, John McGinn's going to come off. No, yeah, he is. He is. I keep, I'm trying to talk myself out of it. But John McGinn's going to come off. Paolo Fornells can come on. Uh, David Moyes has had a go at me for not playing him as often. Let's give him some minutes in the FA Cup. Feels fair to me. Right, the tumble with the throat of Fornells. Who, I just, I've used him before, Paolo Fornells. And he's been a decent player for me. I don't know whether I've used him on YouTube. But in, like, saves offline, I've used him. He's been really good for me. I'm a little surprised he hasn't forced his way into this team, if I'm honest. I really expected him to have the ability to do that. And he's not. So, he's a useful squad player to have. But he doesn't really add a lot, if I'm honest. Because he doesn't play very often. Right, Leon Bailey. Crosses it in. I mean, Ollie Watkins should be banging that in. And Ollie Watkins, again, is still very wasteful, even though he's back in form. But that was an opportunity for, for um, Leon Bailey to get his first assist for the club. And he's kind of stuffed it up himself there. That was a great opportunity for 4-1. I'm a little bit cross we didn't take it. Right. Can we win the ball back? We do. Ollie Watkins now. Look at the space Leon Bailey's in. Leon Bailey is in acres of space here. But can he hold the ball up? Or is he going to go for goal? He went for a silly pass, but it's worked out. And believe it or not, it's Paolo Fornals. The two forgotten players have combined there. And all of a sudden, it's 4-1. And I feel a little bit better about the game now. What a, what a run from Leon Bailey here. I tell you what. As much as I want to sell Leon Bailey, he could play his way into this team and play his way into me keeping him. I'm not a massive fan of his in real life. Personal opinion... I know there's people who love him. I'm not a massive fan. But if he does that on a regular basis, I will not be able to say anything about him. I genuinely won't. That will do nicely. 4-1. I'm a disappointed little sailor about the one, if I'm honest. Disappointed little sailor. You get what I mean. I'm not very happy about it. But it is one of those things... I can deal with it. I can most definitely deal with it. By the way, yes, I did put in a bid for Paolo Dybala and I did include Leon Bailey in it as well. They're not biting. Um, bids have been made by Al Itihad and also Newcastle. We don't have the money at the moment to do that. The problem is, if Leon Bailey plays his way into the team, it's fine. 
because it gives us another wing option. At the moment, we've got Zaniolo, Lamar, and Leon... Well, not even Leon Bailey. Musa Diaby is the one I've been using. Plays his way in. It gives us a fourth option. I mean, again, we do have a fourth option, Yemi Buendia, who is currently injured. Bear that in mind. But he is currently injured. The problem becomes... I would really like some money for a proper defensive midfielder. I don't really want to be using Douglas Luiz as a defensive midfielder on ball winner. It's not what I want to be doing. But it might be the only option that we've got. If we're being completely honest. It might be the only option that we actually have. So we need to judge it. If it's going to make more sense to sell Leon Bailey to bring someone in. I will have to do it. Same with Esri Kansa. I would quite like a good offer to come in for him if we're going to sell him so I can use the money to replace him and invest it in a DM position. I mean, I'm asking for a lot there, but don't ask, you don't get. Right, um, I am going to go ahead. I'm going to play the Bournemouth game and then the Chelsea game. If we weren't in the cup, the semi-final, I would play that Chelsea game on camera because I think that could be a lot of fun. But we will skip it and then we'll come back for that game there against Bournemouth and we'll see whether we can get ourselves to a cheeky Wembley Cup final. Oh, that sounds lovely. Now, I've not even played the first Bournemouth game yet, but this has come up, and it's really... It's troubled me. Offer for Leon Bailey, Tottenham Hotspur, 17.5 million up front. They want to give me 6 million um, after um, six months. Uh, sorry, two lots of six months, so a year. Weird way to phrase that, Stu. Um, and then international appearances after 20 games. I mean, he is playing, I would imagine, regularly-ish for... Jamaica, I think. So that shouldn't be too hard, but I don't know. I don't know. If I could counter offer it and ask them to kind of bung that into here, we'll do it after like appearances for Spurs. I'd be more inclined to do that. The thing is, as well, what I don't know is how much of that money I'll get. I don't know how much of it I'll get. Let's have a quick look at his contract details. Uh, duh, 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 duh. I mean, it doesn't say anything in here. It doesn't look like he would get any kind of fee from it as well. So, I mean, again, we're not planning on using Leon Bailey. I mean, let's do that just to see if they do want to make an offer, but... I don't know. I mean, we can always pull out of it. So, yeah, do you know what? Let's do it. Let's see if we can get him in. If we can get the majority of that money, I'll be quite happy. I can do some damage with that. Again, the aim would be to bring in a defensive midfielder. Fingers crossed we can do something with that then. Okay. This stung a bit. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. This stung quite a bit. Um, I didn't expect us to necessarily uh, beat Chelsea. Although their league positioning was lower than ours, so you never know. I mean, they have got a better squad than ours, but we know what they're like in real life. Um, but this was ridiculous. I mean, Yuri Tillemans getting an own goal early on was so lucky. They then missed a penalty, but then scored it not long after with Nkunku getting it in. But then on the stroke of half time, we get an e well, not an equaliser, we get a goal back, an own goal, admittedly. And then for both of these goals, for Nkunku and Palmer, I'm going to see whether I can show them up. There's one thing that happens with each of these goals that really frustrates me. And let's see if we can identify it. So we have possession here. John McGinn on the ball. It's a lazy pass from John McGinn. It goes through to Nkunku. And okay, maybe the rest of the team can do better there. But they don't. So, shall we have a look at Cole Palmer's goal? Um, it's... I mean, this is probably a little bit further away from it, if I'm honest. I want to get a little bit closer. Probably about here. So Martinez with the ball building out from the back again. Similar to the one before. John McGinn. I mean it's probably a bit harsh for me to put that all on John McGinn and not some of it on Leon Bailey. It's a combination between the two but that chance comes from John McGinn giving possession away again. John McGinn came on as a substitute in that game. As a substitute and as you can see I brought him on and took him off. I was so frustrated with the fact that he'd come on and given up two chances. Bearing in mind as well, um, look at the actual match stats. Okay, on target wasn't great, but we had opportunities. We had a decent amount of possession. Our passing was decent. I'd have taken a 2-1. A 4-1 really did my head in. It really, really annoyed me. Um, but 
We've played that game. We also won the first leg of the get of the Carabao Cup semi-final against Bournemouth. 3-0 in the end. Two late goals kind of confirming it from Leon Bailey. Um, Leon Bailey has done really, really well for us since he's actually come into the squad. Credit where it's due. He's looked good. Scored a couple of goals there. Very happy with him. So I've sold him. So he And I'm, I'm not making it up. I actually have sold him. He has gone. He has left the club. And he's left the club for a fee of 23 million rising to 26. It's on the lower side of what I wanted for him. And Aston Villa have actually made a loss on him. But I didn't buy him. So yeah, is what it is. But with that sale to Tottenham. And again, it's weird because I don't think Tottenham really need him. But they've got him anyway. But if you look at the range of what he's now worth at Tottenham. It's about what we got for him in that kind of region. So I'm okay with it. But we used that money to invest it into a defensive midfielder. And the one I've gone with is Christopher Iyer. Now, <laughs> I have used Christopher Iyer multiple times in Football Manager. I'll be honest. There's a combination of things of why I've signed him. Number one, he was one of the better players available. Number two, he can cover centre-back very well. He's actually a natural centre-back more than a defensive midfielder. But he can do both really well. And number three... He's one of the decent players who actually wanted to come to us. Trying to find players who would come to Villa at this point in the save. So difficult. Christopher I wanted to. No complaints from me. So he's in. And he can't play in this game because he's cup tied. So this is the 11 we're going to be using for the second leg against Bournemouth. It is Martinez in goal. Cash, Conser, Carlos and Digne in defence. Kamara, Tillemans and Ramsey in the midfield. With Zaniolo and Diaby supporting Watkins up front. Um, on the injury side of things, McTominay is nearly on his way back. Mings and Wendy are still two to three months out. However, two to three months out, they could be back for the end of the season, which means we have an extra attacking midfielder and extra defender as well. <coughs> Apologise if there's a couple of cuts like that. I have... I think I've got the beginnings of a cold. I don't know whether you can hear it. Um, I'm recording the next day from the first half of this video, so... He probably will come through. And there will be the occasional cut here or there while I sneeze my guts out. Uh, but let's get into the game. Now, in terms of player happiness, Robin Olsen's come to me saying he's not happy with playing time. But I think we've managed to head that off. But to be honest, if I could get rid of him this season, I'd be quite happy to do that. I'd be quite happy indeed. Uh, again, as mentioned before, a 3-0 lead in this game already. So we're just looking to make sure we don't lose by three goals to nil and go to, like... All of the extra time penalty shenanigans. Ideally, we want to win the game, obviously. But with the team losing against Chelsea the way that they did, I'm expecting it might be on the tougher side. Also, we are away from home and Bournemouth have it all to do. I'm not expecting it to be an easy game by any stretch of the imagination because FM doesn't quite like having easy games in this kind of scenario. I mean, automatically they're putting us under pressure. But Jacob Ramsey does really well there. I don't know what happened there. A bit of ping pong in the box. Well, in and around our box is a bit of a concern. But we get away with it. And here come Bournemouth again. Everything so far has been Bournemouth. But then they have been losing possession. And we now have the ball back. Diaby just trying to ghost past his man. He's done a good job of it, actually. He's in to the penalty area. Into Watkins. But Zaniolo is the one who gets on the end of it. And it is 1-0. 4-0 overall. Nicola Zaniolo doing a good job there. I can't believe I'm going to say this. Because... As much as I've liked using Zaniolo in the past on Football Manager, I do feel like he's nowhere near the level he once was. I mean, he was kind of a wonder kid who was going to be a superstar. I've used him before at Roma, actually. Obviously, he's not a Roma in real life now. We haven't loaned him from Roma. But when he was at Roma, I had used him in a previous FM. And he was a superstar. I thought this season he'd be a player who would kind of disappoint and we'd let go of him. Actually, if I can keep him next season, I really would like to. He's been sensational for us. Oh, Ollie. Oh, Ollie. Ollie should be making it 2-0 there. He really should be making it 2-0 there. It's a bit disappointing that he hasn't done. And we are looking much better and much more fluid than we did against Chelsea, which is to be expected. Chelsea, again, off-the-field stuff and like real-life stuff notwithstanding, Chelsea got a good squad of players. Oh my word, if Zaniolo had a scored that, I would have. we've got a little bit of transfer money left over, I would have tried to use that to sign him here and now. Goodness me, what a strike that was. I'm so gutted it didn't go in. Um, but yeah, I think... I think, yeah. I can't remember what the point I was making. <laughs> um, but I'm really happy with how things have gone. Now, what I will say is Bournemouth have had a lot of chances and they've all been on target. It's a bit of a concern for me. 
and we do need to do something about it relatively quickly. Giving them opportunities is not something I'm overly happy about. We are kind of sitting off them a bit, letting them pummel us and then just bursting forward. I am going to demand more from the boys because actually our general play doesn't look like it's been that good. And most of the opportunities we've seen have actually been Bournemouth opportunities. And it leaves me feeling a little bit, I don't know. We have to be better in front of goal. Ollie Watkins, you've not been good enough. Not even close to being good enough in this game. Bubakar Kamara and Jacob Ramsey, I feel like I need a little bit more from you two. Everyone else is fine, but I'm, I'm just not a fan of the facts that they keep coming forward and we don't seem to be able to shut them down. That feels a bit of a concern. What I am going to do is we're going to put work ball into the box on. So when we get the ball, we take our time with it a little bit. Let's build up a bit of possession. Let's build up some opportunities and let's try and get a few more on target. And straight away, do you know what? This game sometimes just knows how to infuriate you. However, for this game, obviously, it's a problem. But Bubakar Kamara being injured is not the end of the world because we now have Christopher Iyer. Right, Douglas Louise will come in and he will fill in for now anyway because we can't play Iyer because he's cup-tied. Um, I hope that's not a bad injury. It's been injuries are plenty in this game. No yellow card. Well, as soon as I say that, a yellow card comes up. But it's been injuries apalenti in this game. So we still only had the one shot on target. Our one shot on target has been a goal, which is lovely. Which is very lovely. Um, I mean, it's a bit of a drab game. Again, that three-goal advantage we already had, I think had already killed it off. Ollie Watkins needs to have a word with himself, though. Like, just change the subject. I'm, I'm going to put Diaby up front. We'll take Watkins off. We'll bring Lamar on for some football. I kind of want to bring John McGinn on, but I also don't because I don't want him to tank the rest of the team like he did last time out. Um, but you know what? I'm going to give him a chance. But it is only a chance. I'm, I'm, I'm not... I'm willing to sub him again. I am willing to do that if I need to. We've had another shot on target, by the way, which is delightful. I would quite like us to score another goal, though. But I don't think it's going to happen. But again, away from home, winning, that's the main thing. Right, we have two final changes left. Latomba's going to come on for Matty Cash. Um, and Digne's going to come off for Moreno. We'll do that. A couple of defensive changes. I'm not against those. But we start with the highlight. Uh, the highlight with us in possession. And we immediately give the ball away. Because for some reason, Emmy Martinez doesn't remember he's meant to pass it short. Which is really infuriating. But he catches the ball, which is the main thing. Um, he does that every now and then, Emmy Martinez. Even though he's meant to roll it out. Um, or, or pass it out to someone close by. Mainly, he's meant to go to the holding midfielder. Which in this case is Douglas Louise. And he's not doing that. Um, incidentally, I might change that. At the moment, he's meant to go to whoever's in this position. Um... I might just change it to centre-back because, uh, I don't know, it, it feels like it probably brings a player who could be a bit further forward, closer to the defence. John McGinn's on the ball here. And John McGinn redeems himself for the Chelsea performance where we subbed him off after subbing him on. And that makes me feel a bit better about him. He's come on, he's played in, playing in that Mazzala role and he just goes and hoofs it in the back of the net and makes it 5 overall, 2-0 on the night. Job done. Job done, and we're through to, in our first season, we're through to a final. Let's hype that up a little bit. We're through to a final in our first season. Get in there, boys. Get in there. Wembley awaits. Wembley awaits, and we're still in the FA Cup as well. By the way, I haven't talked about it at all in this video, and we are through to the next round of the Europa Conference League. I can't remember whether we've had our opponents for that come through yet. We will have a look after this game is finished, but... We have qualified. We are through to the knockouts. We ended up doing it relatively comfortably, which was nice to see. Um, Lamar, I mean, he let the ball run there, which is probably the wise thing to do. Right, McGinn into Zaniola. He's made a successful pass, everybody. Yay! And Zaniola, who's been so good recently and scored the opening goal in this game, goes and gives the ball away. Bournemouth might get a late consolation goal here. No. Nope. Martinez will not be beaten. I think that was the post more than anything. But we do... End, well, no, we don't end the game. I was getting ready to wind up there. But we have time for one more highlight. Martinez again comes forward and claims the ball. How his rating has dropped, I don't really know. Because he was on over a 7 before. I don't really understand how it's dropped when, you know, he hasn't been beaten in 90 minutes. Um, although he has given the ball away there. So maybe it's um, his... Uh, Maybe it's his distribution that's been letting him down on his rating. His distribution is not that good for Emmy Martinez, I have to say, which is a bit weird. I don't think it is that bad in real life, if I'm honest. I think FM's got his distribution a little bit wrong. 
Um, like it's not the worst distribution in the game, don't get me wrong, but I feel like it's better than it's being shown as. Right, Daniolo and Douglas Louise managed to work together beautifully and then stuff up immediately. But again, Martinez doing really good work. He wants a clean sheet in this game. I mean, this is a weird highlight because they're not getting back into the game. So unless they score from this corner, I don't really see what the point of the highlight was. As I was saying, I don't know what the point of that was. But we do win the game. Zaniolo and McGinn putting us through um, this side of the tie. But we were already through anyway, thanks to the three goals in the first leg. 5-0 overall. Two clean sheets against Bournemouth is great. Now, this is a transfer I was looking at. Thinking more ahead to next season. But it would also help for this year. Diogo Dalot, solid right-back choice. And if we can get him for a decent uh, wage... We're bringing him in for 27 million, not all of that up front, only about 9 million of it up front. I'm really happy with that as a transfer if we can do it. Really happy indeed. Now, he wants a chunk of money, he wants to be an important player. I want him to get him to a regular starter because, quite frankly, Matty Cash, unless something dramatic happens, is going to be our starting right back. But I'm hoping we can just convince him to be a regular starter, and we can, which is great. We're also going to have a. Um, a release clause in there. As long as it's higher than that amount, then I'm happy with it. Let's go with that. Brilliant. So Diogo Dalot might be in, and to be honest with you, I think that'll be a good use of money. He's younger. Um, he'll be a great cover option. I think he can play left back as well. Yes, he can. He could even be an emergency winger if we needed him to be. Not that I would use him as that. I think that's a really, really smart transfer if we can get him in. It looks like we can. I don't think anyone else touch wood is currently in for him. Um, interestingly, though, Scott Southgate watching our squad, looking at Ezra Conter, Jacob Ramsey, and Ollie Watkins. I mean, hopefully he's watched Ollie Watkins' other performances recently because that wasn't a good one. But you can see, since we had that conversation with him, which was around here, in fact, it was here, actually, first game, hat-trick, injured, next game, two goals. Had a poor game, had a run of three games where we were scoring or putting um, the ball on the plate for other people. He's had a poor couple of games now. Which means I would expect him to kick on again. So he's done a really good job of picking things up. But he needs to get his average rating. But his average rating is in kind of around the area that it needs to be. So I'm quite content with that. Right. When are we going to be back? We are going to be back for... I mean, it goes without saying. Carabao Cup Final. I'm still staggered that we've got there. We're coming back for that. And we're probably going to pair it with the Europa Conference League second leg of the round of 16. I think that makes the most sense to do. We'll pair those two games together and hopefully we end with a trophy as well as progressing through to the quarterfinal of a European competition. That sounds like a plan to me. Thank you very much for watching. Do not forget to leave a like if you did enjoy and don't forget to subscribe. It's completely free to do so and you'll make me a very happy chap and you might even make my cold go away. Promising nothing. I've been Stu, you guys have been awesome and I will see you in the next video. Cheers.